So I was looking for video ideas and then I thought why don't I just do a tier list video because you know those are always fun and I you basically make up the, the video as you go so that's that's perfect for me because when I don't work off a script then oh god do I start rambling. <laughs> Um, now, I chose the BR standards because they, usually when people talk about the BR standards, you know, they, they talk about the two big ones and then the rest they kind of go like, eh, you know. Now, in general, I like the BR standards. I like what they're supposed to do. I like their general design philosophy. There's two classes that I don't really like, but we'll get there. Uh, all these images come from Wikipedia, all the sources will be in the description, so I guess, you know, let, let's begin. So the way we're going to do this is that S is for the absolute best, A is for the, yeah, they're good, they're just solid good, B is for the, yeah, they're, they're good, they have their flaws, C is for, nah, neither good nor bad, D is just, there's more bad than good, E is just for, no, why would you even, and F is just, God, never use this, just, Please put it in a siding. So we're going to start with the smallest, which are the class 2 moguls. And the problem with the class 2 moguls is, is that they are a copy of the Ivet moguls, the class 2 moguls, but with added foot plating. This means that they're heavier than the Ivet moguls. And they're the same engine, just with a different type of cab layout. So... I like what they're trying to do with them, you know, just add the, the IVET version along the other, you know, on other parts of the network, because I believe they were allocated mostly to the um, northeastern and Scottish regions. And although the Scottish region had a lot of IVET locos, uh, the northeastern real, the northeastern region rather, didn't. But at the same time. You know, the IVET locos still exist, so they're always going to be burdened with the comparison. Now, for replacing the elderly 060s, you know, you, you have to commend for what you have to commend them, you know, because that that job has to be done. It's just that why why bother, man? The 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 IVET engines already exist. You know, I I guess there's nothing bad about them, so I guess I'll just plunk them in C. Though I guess they also could go in D because, you know, the Ivet logos already exist. You know what? I'm going to put this in... I'm going to put this in D and we'll go from there. That's how it goes with videos like this. I figured it out as it goes. The class 2 tank engines. Again, why were they built? <laughs> you have perfectly capable Ivet examples... I believe these were never motor fitted, whilst the Ivet engines were. Actually, I don't know if these were motor fitted. If anything, this video just goes to show how little I know about the the, the the British standards. But, again, only 30 of these were built because 130 of the Ivet engines already existed. Again, it's the same engine with more foot plating and and a different cab, so honestly, why do you exist? I do believe, actually, that they managed to outlive a lot of the... the... Um, the, uh, the Southern Railway locomotives, and they were also trying to be used on the Isle of Wight, but even before that plan, plan went through, you know, they, they just said, nah, man, we're gonna use EMUs that, that scrapped a lot, so really... You didn't have to exist. Alright, so then we're on to the Class 3. This is the Mogul variant. The Class 3 was mostly, again, associated with the Northeastern region and Scotland. Um, the problem with those regions is... Is that when track renewals and just general, you know, what, what was supposed to be asked on these locos... Either you would use the Class 2 because it was a lightly laid line... Or you would use the excellent class 4s, which, you know, are just, they are the better engines, really. One did go to the southern region, and it stayed there until the end of steam, but... Again, they fit in such a small niche, that why would you... I, I, I honestly, I just, I, I don't see the point. Indeed you go. 
Then there are the class 3 tank engines. Now these fared a little better. Um, it's just that they suffered from being tank engines, which means that they suffered from the same thing that all tank engines suffered from, and that is that their jobs were dieselized the first. So when they were used on branches, you know, uh, on the intermediate branches that they could be used on, DMUs were introduced, and when they then had to move to suburban, u suburban use, you know, DMUs were also kind of starting to get a foothold there. So then the Southern region tried to use them on coaching stock, but again, the, the, four, the class 4s fared better there. However, they did excellent work in Wales on the local services, and they even pulled a named stopping service, a named local service, called the Red Dragon, I believe. So, yeah, really, these are just standard versions of the Prairie tanks from the Great Western region, so... You know, by the turn of the century, they, uh, by, by 1950, I mean, um, those were already half a century old, so, you know, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't think it's fair putting them in D, but I, I think putting them in C is, because they were always just, you know, they suffer from the same problem as the moguls, you know, they're so, they're such an, they're, they're of such an intermediate size that, I mean, yeah, I think comparative to the rest, I'm going to put you in C. On to class 4s next, and um, let's do the Mogul first, because the Mogul, I think, is the most interesting. The Mogul is an excellent engine. Its boiler is neither too short nor too... Its boiler is neither too big nor too small. It has the perfect wheel size for freight trains, you know. They got excellent use on the southern region and on the Scottish region because the southern region had could use the larger tenders with them and they were, you know, the perfect midway size for the Scottish region because they uh, replaced the uh, larger 060, like the 4F designs. Um, I like, I really like, I really like the, the four moguls because it was the uh, first large British steam loco in steam that I went to see on the North York Moors Railway. And really, I, I I love the design. Like, they they look neither too... They don't... They look proportion... Their proportions are great. Their work they can do is great. You know, they, they provide a more flexible version of the tank engine because they can just go further, you know. And, you know, they, they can... They were used on cross-country freights, they were used on stoppers in Scotland, on in, in the Midland region, and I, I even believe in the Eastern region. You know, I, I, I can't give them other than to be, they're, they're just, they're, I've, I've heard them being described as good, willing little engines, and that's honestly, that's honestly the best, the best description I can give of them. Now, the 460s. <sighs> they were allocated to the southern Western and Midland region, I believe. None were allocated to Scotland, and none were allocated to the Northeast. I think, I, I, I'm misremembering. But they they got a reputation for poor steaming, and the boiler on these ones is of a very awkward proportion compared to you know the 460 wheel arrangement. Again, on the southern region, they were fitted with the large tenders, and they did excellent work on the southern region, because they, they replaced the elderly southern region designs, which is good. However, the class 4s and 5s also did that, and they did it better, I, I would like to argue. Uh, they were fitted with the double chimneys, which I believe did improve their drafting, however, I believe they didn't steam as well on the Welsh coal. So they were not ideal on the western region, and again, the western region, the western region had the, uh, the, the, yes, the manors! They worked along the Cambrian Railway, and they, they did, they did good work there, because they replaced the elderly Duke dogs. Well, elderly, they were, I believe, by 1950, about 20 years old. Um, they are the best example I can give of, you know, 440s being superseded by 460s by British Railways, and 
they did good work. It's just that they steamed poorly. And yeah, okay, on the preserved in the preserved uh, era, they did good work. They went up to to Wales and again along the Cambrian route. And uh, you know the the North Yorkshire Moors Railway has one, I think. The Keithyworth Valley Railway has one. You know they 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 can do excellent work now. It's just that it's unfair to to compare what they can do now to compare to what you know what they had to do in service. So uh, I think I'm gonna have to put you in C because you were a great idea. It's just the execution was was less than ideal. I did speak to a driver on the NYMR who told me that these engines uh, at one point just showed up out of nowhere and replaced all the four Fs that were there on the freight workings. I believe I believe it was on Saltly. Oh, no. No, no, that wasn't Saltly. But, um, yeah, just, you know, they, they, they really are just middle of the road replacing the older designs. And whilst not ideal, you know, they suddenly proved their worth, I think. The Class 4. The Class 4 tank engine is a brilliant locomotive. It was located to every region bar the western, I think. In the beginning, at least. And they, they were all built at Brighton, you know, they, and you can, you can tell that they are southern engines. If you look at them, they, they belong on the southern. And no, le no less, that's because when you look at them on, on head-on, and they're pulling southern region stock, you know, the bullied coaches and the, the, the green Mark 1s. Well, I guess the Mark 1s less so because they, those came later, but the bullied coaches. You can tell that they curve very slightly, you know, and that's because they had to fit in narrower tunnels. But they curve ever so slightly and they fit almost perfect along with coaches that were used on the southern region. Uh, they did great work in Scotland. They did great work in on the LNER system, ex LNER system. They did great work on the Midland region, and again the southern region. They they pulled the um, the trains on what is now the Bluebell Railway. Uh, just man, they pulled the empty coaching stock on Waterloo to Nine Elms and um, uh, what's the junction called again? Ah. Ah, I forgot. What's the junction that they hold the co the coaches from again, where the coaches were capped? I'll I'll put it I'll put it on the screen now. Because, but it's ah, uh, I I've forgotten. They are excellent engines. They are the perfect size for basically any long branch line. You know, they replaced a lot of the small southern region locomotive. They replaced the 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 class one P. They replaced the two P. Yeah, I mean in general, these engines are just excellent. They steam well, they are the right proportions, they, they're they not used as much on freight, although the footage does exist on them on freight. And, come on, it's it's the class 4, like, how, the class 4 tank is just amazing. It's, it worked everywhere, again, I don't think they worked in the western, but they did excellent work, and they, 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 they deserve to be an A tier, that's, that's all I can say, because, just, man, they're so versatile. The Class 5. The Class 5 is, I think, my favourite of the small, quote-unquote, small standards. Uh, it features in all of my videos, and I, I man, I, I really like, I really like the Standard 5. Now, the Standard 5s suffer from one thing, and that's that they're always going to be compared to the Black 5s, because they have larger wheels than the Black 5s. And they they have the same boiler as the Britannia. No, the, the same uh, wheel size as the Britannia, not the same boiler, I think. A uh, smaller boiler on this one. And, yeah, just, you know, the fact that you're a 5MT, you're always going to be compared to the to the Black 5s. You know, it happened to the B, the B, the B1s. It happened to the holes, even though the holes came earlier. You know, this, that's the only thing that I have against the standard 5. So I don't think they belong in S tier. So, now we're up for 80. Do, do they belong in 80? They they replaced a lot of the old southern region designs that dated back from the London Southwestern Railway, like the, the King Arthur's. They, I believe, helped supersede the Lord Nelson's, or the, the, the Bullies did that more so, and then these, you know, fitted that little gap between heaviest expresses and, you know, intermediate expresses. They, again, on the southern region, were fitted with the large tenders. They worked along the... 
Midland region. Uh, they also worked on the Western region. I don't think they worked... I, I do think they worked along the northeastern region and the the Scottish batch. Yes, I didn't mention the Scottish batch. I believe a batch of 30... No. A batch was fitted with Caprotti valve gear. And they were um, associated with the, with the Scottish region because they were, you know, they were shedded there. And they pulled um, very heavy expresses there, but they also... <laughs> There's also footage existing, I know this because I've seen it, but I, I don't know where it's from, of one of these hauling a one-coach local train sender first. And it's very funny, but, you know, that was towards the end of Steam, so it's not really fair. Um, I did believe they hauled the Anglo-Scottish trains, but not very further s far, far south. They, man, they, they're just good engines, although I, I do believe that they steamed a little... A little... Porter, when, well, well, of course, when compared to the Black Fires, but, you know, in general, I guess. Uh, they were the first 460s to be built at Doncaster. Uh, which is kind of funny to think about, because, like, even the Gresley B-17s, they were built at Darlington. Ah, uh, man, I, oh, do they belong in, no, I think, I think they go in A. I think they go in A, because... They did such good work, you know, they hold, they, they, they weren't even named on the southern region, which did kind of rub salt in the wounds for those who really like the, the King Arthurs. But I don't think they're worthy of B. I think they're too good for, for B. I think A perfectly describes them as just, you know, all-round good machines, just not on the same level as the Black Fires, because that's just cruel. Then there's the Class 6 Pacifics, the clans. I really like what the clans are supposed to do. You know, they're supposed to be the the mixed traffic Pacific that bullies engines never were. And ah man. They had very poor drafting. So you really had to thrash them. And yes they were used on freight trains. Uh, they were also seen at Stranra. So that, that kind of goes to show like how far west they could go. They were also intended to be built for the southern region, but steel shortages and the modernization plan kind of put a stop to that. They, re they really needed more testing and development. And I think it's unfair to say that if they had more testing, they would have been an A, or maybe even a B. But... They didn't receive that testing, and I believe they worked as far south as Leeds. Uh, I, I, at least I have I have records, or at least no, I don't have records. I have seen footage of one of them arriving at Leeds, and I don't know if they worked any further south. But if they managed to haul like Leeds trains all the way like to you know Scotland, because they they mostly were based around Carlisle and you know, Kingmore. And I believe the other half was Glasgow Pomaldi, because only 10 of these existed. So I believe 5 went to Kingmore, 5 went to... Uh, 5 went to Pomaldi. If they didn't, I'm gonna look very silly. But... Man, uh, I can't give them a high rating, because they were honestly not that good. Though they were said to be very reliable, so... Mm, uh, I'm sorry, I don't... I. The last one disappeared, I think, in 1967. Or was it 66? I believe it was 66. And, oh man, ah, they did good work in Scotland, it's just they weren't good engines, so... Ah, mm. I'm tempted to put them in C, because generally, uh, from what I've read up on them, workmen didn't hate them. It's just that they were cursed with being compared to the standard fives and the standard sevens and you know then then you kind of come poor either end because you're you know you're weaker than the britannias but also you're not as good as the standard fives so ah no i, I don't think it's worthy of a b uh like yeah they they were used very well, like, they they racked in, like, 200,000 miles between general repairs. But, 
man, if you're a poor and if you're a poor steamer, you know, and and you're not as yeah, I think the, I think the main problem with this, with this the the clans was other than being you know a class six is that they were oftentimes used for the work that the Britannias were used for, and you know they're only class six locomotives, so why why would you why would you do that? Like it's stupid. Like of course they're not going to be satisfactory. I think they deserve the benefit of that. I think C just describes them describes them well enough. I think. I don't think they're as bad to go in D. Yeah, I think. But you know, on that on that prospect, if they, if they belong in D, then I think that the class three tender engine should go in E because, like, where honestly, where does that niche belong? Like, why 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 do why do you exist? I th I think this, I think this, yes, I think that looks better. No. The Britannias. I like Britannias. I like the clans more because they, the proportions look better, I think. But the Britannias, I really like what the Britannias do. Again, they're trying to be mixed traffic Pacifics, and they were. They were. They were all. They were used on, on express freight and and parcel trains. And they were introduced on the Great Eastern medals, which I find weird because. The Great Eastern didn't have space for Pacifics. Did, did I miss that they they extended the turntables and tur turn turning points and turning loops? I I I don't know. But they they did excellent work. I think the Britannias are excellent engines, and they did excellent work. It's just that they didn't really belong on regions such as the southern. And the the western, and really, I don't see why the northeastern region would use them either, because they have a boatload of Pacifics they can use themselves for for fast freight and for expresses, formerly, um, mainly expresses. I mean, so yeah, and then compared to you know the the bad rap they got from the western region staff, although those tend to badmouth the standards anyway. I think that they belong in A. I yeah, I, I struggle to see why actually they shouldn't belong in A because really these were the savior of the London Midland region at the end of their lives, especially. And they did it they, they did good work in the Loon Gorge and Overshap, you know. But you know, really the, the Midland region and the 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 X LMS lines is where they were best suited. I, I I don't really see why they would be needed on the other regions. Maybe in the Great Eastern and maybe the Southern when the bullets failed. But again, they didn't really, they don't really seem to be necessary there. Right, Duke of Gloucester. I don't like the look of Duke of Gloucester. I don't think it's a good idea that it was built. I don't like Duke of Gloucester. I, it, it was such a pain to use in its surface years. Yes, on its preserve in its preserve life, it did excellent work. It's just that, again, I have to judge these by the merit of, you know, at their working careers. And the Duke, it really, it really just didn't work. I, I've seen like pictures of this thing holding just three coach trains because they didn't trust it with anything else apparently. Like, yeah, you 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 try to replace. You try to replace the turbo motive. That's what it was built for, I believe. But it didn't work. Why would you introduce a non-standard standard locomotive when you could just build another one of Ivet's Pacifics? Those were they were the better engines. Like, come on, they're a modified they're a modified version of the of the Duchess. Why wouldn't you why wouldn't you why wouldn't you even like build more LMS? No, I would say why wouldn't you build more LMS diesels, but the LMS mainline diesels were also non-standard, so yeah, no, that's a poor argument. I honestly, the Duke, I failed to see why it was preserved. Like, honestly, it was such a bad locomotive in service. 9Fs. 9Fs. Excellent engine. Just excellent engine used on the heaviest freights you know used on western on all the regions they were used i believe bar the southern region because they never had great 
freight traffic. They were used on the heaviest coal trains in the West region, they were used on the heaviest coal trains in the Northeastern region, they were used on the Iron Ore trains from Time Dock to Consett. They were modified for that for that use, they were, they were fitted with two Westinghouse pumps. They could haul 12 coach... Actually no, it was 20 coaches I believe, there's footage of a 20 coach train along the Northeastern region being pulled by a 9F. They, they couldn't really be used for, for, for passenger work because the bearings would run hot. At least that was what the report says. But... For this one, I'm willing to make an exception to the... They were only good in service. They were the, I have to judge these by their service year rules. Because I believe when the Channel Tunnel uh, did, you know, their stunts with like steam engines where they used a, a bullied and I believe a 9F to haul some, um, some stone trains. I believe a 9F hauled a train over 10,000 tons. And that's... That's a testament, I believe, like, they said that that was a testament to how good these engines actually were, you know, I have no, you know, real reference for that, because I'm not an engine driver, I'm, I'm a nerd, but, man, I, I, th I do think that, I do think that, I, I do think that's the only one that's really deserving of an S tier, because, other than being relatively non-standard compared to the other standards, there's a leaf blower guy going outside my house. Okay, leaf lower man has stopped. I have to. I have to finish this quickly. Like, why would it even belong in A? Like, there is nothing bad about these engines. Yeah, okay, the crusty variants didn't work, but those were classified 8F. So they're not standard, really. I guess. But ah, the only thing the 9Fs, you know, that's a shame about the 9Fs that they did, couldn't continue on for very much longer because they were they. They're, they're such good engines, you know. The Western region staff used these to to cover for Britannia's when they failed, and that's saying something, you know. And I believe I I, I heard that the Shedmaster at was it was it Peterborough or Kings Cross? I cannot tell, but they they had no suitable passenger motive power anymore for a was it a, a, a Grantham or Peterborough Express? So they just said, nah, we'll just use the 9F. And it worked. Freight, freight locos on, on on passenger trains. They they, they just they, they keep amazing me. And I actually think that this looks all right. I think this looks all right because we have you know you have the excellent 9F at the top. Then you have the, the Ford tank, the 5MT, the Britannia and A. You know, just very good engines. Nothing nothing to add. You know, one comparison. You know, the, the standard five. But that's not really fair. Class four really. I don't think it belongs in A, I believe B is just good enough. You know, I believe B is just enough. And there's C with the, the 3 tank and the 4, 460. There's the 2, both variants, of the variants of, both variants of the 2 in D. And the clan and then E for the, the, the Y where you build versions. Yeah, this looks, this looks good to me. I think that's going to be it. Uh, this is how I rate the standards. Uh, if anything, this video just goes to show how, how uneducated I am, and, and I probably should have um, read more about this than I, than I did. I, I have a couple of books that I always, I religiously use for sources for my, uh, those great locomotives uh, videos, but uh, I just use those as sources, so yeah. Let me know if you agree with this. Uh, most likely you don't, so uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, please don't shout at me. The next train related video I'm going to do is probably going to be about the Princess Royal for a, those great locomotives. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, as they used to say on the radio. Why do, why do we still say, say stay tuned? Because we're on YouTube, but it's not radio. They don't tune in, they click on the video. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye. Overly loud intro, loading in now.